This is the second video in a series about the Stream Deck Plus and how to configure that in Reactor. And uh, we came as far in the previous video as uh, to controlling the input sources on an ATEM switch. And now we'll continue with the cut, auto, fade to black and key of function. So I'll just go over here and select this one. And um, I'm still on this layer. I'll right click, I'll create a behavior. I will edit, go to my ATEM switch, I'll search up for cut. Uh, let me see, cut in transition, wonderful. We need that one, the one ME, and now we have a cut button up here. Let me see. So when I'm zooming in right here, I'm just rolling my mouse. And then if you hold down like an option, uh, sorry, option key, on the keyboard, you can drag around. So these navigational tips are up here. So just click that one. You can read how to navigate around in the view. That's very useful. And now, um, actually, this button is going to work. So we'll just, you know, as we simulate it, you can see that it is changing accordingly. So that's just super cool. Now, I want to change the icon on this one. So I'll go into default feedback. I will in, uh, set data source and choose inline icon. Yeah, inline icon. And I made this cut button. So let's just have this one. I'll select it. It's uploaded. Hey, it's. Ah! It's there, perfect. So I got my cut button in place. And also, as I'm pressing the button, you see that it, it is lighting up. It has this gray bar on the top. In fact, this gray bar is, mm, I don't like it too much, like, you know, on the display. So I would like to sort of get rid of that. I'll just therefore set the default to be off. It doesn't matter so much in this case, but you see now the gray bar disappeared and now it's just lighting up red as I'm pressing it. That light up in red is actually coming from here where it says 300 milliseconds after having received the trigger, we are going to light this one up, set the intensity to on. So this is the programming that gives you that, um, that highlight. Let's move on. We have more to do. So we basically just do the same, create this one for auto in this case. Uh, ooh, no, no, no. I need to select the ATEM Mini. Auto. And let's just make the transition, select one of me. We are seeing it doing the same thing. It's suggesting the trigger type. We now have um, probably auto is just working. So you see, okay, it's making a transition. Let's just check it with the software control real quick. So if we move this to the side, we should see software control here. And as I'm pressing the auto, you see it's moving an auto, tra auto transition. So that all works. We can show more, go to default feedback. We'll find the uh, data source, change to inline icon, select an icon from my drive right there. And if we want to do the same, we'll just select off to not have that LED bar on the top. What about fade to black? Is that not the same thing? Almost, I would say. Now, there is a little change happening on this guy. And that is, uh, let's just pick this, fade, fade to black. Now, in many ways, we can run this the same way, but it's actually go going to suggest a behavior which is different. It's coming from the Blackmagic ATEM library of standard behaviors of, of master behaviors here. And it is not going to work in this case. Um, I figured out why, because when I look more closely at this behavior, it has two variables inside that we are not using. The one called is um, var device index, and the other one is uh, me row. And that is like standard when we do ATEM configurations because the ME row, which we have so far just selected. Now, if you go to the auto, then this little one, that one is a reference to which ME row. Because if you have multi-ME ATEM switcher, then that could be two, three, or four. And therefore, we often associate that with a variable. So you can change it on the control and have that button do the whatever ME row you have selected. Now, I know that this is the case in here. And um, unfortunately, I would love to tell you that you could just go in here in the JSON and press show parent behavior. And oftentimes, especially if it is the Skyhoist uh, master behaviors, the standard master behaviors, you'll see them here. But unfortunately, we don't. And um, the only thing I can tell you is that I have knowledge you don't. And in this case, we need to create those two variables. But it's, it, it's, it may be there when you're working with this. So ME row is one that I know we need to create. And the other one, ooh, I just called it a wrong thing. Now, OK, um, device index. We'll just fix that in a moment. So we'll create these two. If I go in here and say, OK, I just want this to be hard coded to one, it's just one all the time. And what about the, this variable? 
you should not be able to actually create it with that name. Now, uh, I'll just change it <laughs> by simply changing its name like this. So we have, hopefully, um, mm, okay, yeah, I need to change it on a different level. I need to go in here because the variables I create is actually keys in this JSON array. So I just need to remove that, save it, and okay, now I could also just change it in here to hard code it to the value one so that it can never be anything, just one, 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 save current file, we are home in the configuration once again. And now, guys, you will see that these two variables, having the value one, will actually inform what is happening on this guy. So if I go up here and we fade to black, let's just check it. OK, we have fade to black right here. I click this one, it's going to fade to black. And it should be blinking. I thought it would be. Ah, OK, it is blinking in real life. It's just because our simulation environment doesn't allow us to see blinking, but it is actually blinking over here. That's one thing I dislike about that, and that is if we, ah, actually here you can see it because, OK, um, you, you see the, don't you? Don't you, don't you, don't you? Yeah, here you can see anytime we are referring to fade to black, we are using var device index and var me row. This is where I knew it from. But I also want the intensity to actually be on it's because I think it's a pretty much cooler thing if it is on. So I should have a little more intense blink on the button. Uh, maybe I also need to do it down here. Um, yes, thank you. So now it's blinking a little bit more intense over here on the actual stream deck. So that is super nice. OK, final thing that we want to do, we are really covering some ground here. We have now fade to black. We can turn it on and off. And now it is off. You see, it's not fading to black anymore. We can also do it from the ASIM switch, and it's going to reflect over here. Of course, all the time, Skahoy implementations is about having duplex information. We want to send commands. We want to read feedback. And we put a lot of effort into that. I tell you, man, it, there's a huge difference from just sending, firing a trigger with HTTP some WebSocket command and then reading feedback from the devices. That is where like 90% of all our efforts on 95 is going. That is device feedback being true. And uh, that's really important for a broadcast system you can rely on. So this is why we do all that. Uh, let's just check Then auto is working, cut is working. That's perfect. So now we want the Kia in place. And it's basically what we have done before. But this time, instead of a trigger, because all the others were triggers, you notice that? Uh, behind that one, that would be a trigger. But this is Skahoy trigger. So trigger is like, you know, that's not like a value you're setting. You're just triggering something. Now, for the uh, for the um, the final uh, button that we want to code here, we'll just set this one up. We will choose a upstream key. Let me see what we have. So key, key, key. We have a lot of downstream key stuff here. We have an upstream key uh, cut. We'll just choose the cut function for the upstream key. So we select ME row and we select upstream key number one. That's the only thing we have. So uh, hopefully it selects like a toggle for us. Yes, it does. OK, so that's nice. And that means uh, this should probably work right away. OK, so let's just check this with the software control. I press this button. Yes, we have basically we are toggling this on and off. Thank you so much. And then we can go in here and change the icon as well to that funky icon I just made. And then we are basically done. So let's just do that. And there we go. We have the key on, off, on, off. And we see the same thing over here on the stream deck. Oh, by the way, notice the tally. The tally information, you can see it here in the simulator as well. The tally information on this one is uh, red the moment that I enable the key. And why is that? This is why you don't just want to detect if the source is on program. You want to know if it's on, if, if it's live. And this is what red tally gives you. And we chose that tally source by tally flags or whatever the parameter was called. And that is actually a calculated tally that the ATEM switcher makes that will tell you if an input source is anywhere shown on the live image, not just on program, but if it's on a key, either as a mask or as a fill source. So very important to use tally source by tally flags to create a true tally reflection on your stream deck or your Skyhawk controller. 
So guys, I thank you so much for following this video. And we have another five uh, episodes to follow up on to get all the way through this exciting project with a lot of funky graphics. And now you can imagine that the rest of the focus is going to be down here on the widescreen display and the encoders.